Hi, welcome to the Barrett channel. Welcome to another video. I'm coming to you from Shenzhen, China and an update on the current situation here today. Um, weather is 24 degrees and cloudy today. Um, quite warm, quite nice, but a little bit of uh, overcast cloud. So, uh, the numbers today. Um, so, first of all, the China numbers. Uh, we have confirmed cases of 44,726. There are 1,114 deaths and there are 4,733 people who have recovered. And apart from Hubei, which has around 75% of the total confirmed cases, there are still only three other provinces with more than um, a thousand, and that's uh, Guangdong uh, with 1,219, which is approximately 2.7%. Hernan with 1,135, which is approximately 2.5%, and Zhejiang with 1,131, which is also around 2.5%. Um, here in Shenzhen, where I am, there are 386 confirmed cases. And the other major city in Guangdong, which is Guangzhou, there are 323 um, confirmed cases. Okay, so this chart um, that I'm now showing on the screen, um, it's basically the number of confirmed cases um, on a daily basis, both in Hubei province and also Wuhan city. Uh, as you can see, um, for the last six days, the number of reported confirmed cases has actually been declining. It peaked on around the 4th of February and on average has been declining from that date, which is, of course, um, good news. OK, on to global numbers now. There are 405 um, confirmed cases outside of China. There is one death and there's 47 people recovered. Um, Japan has by far the most um, outside of China. However, you need to remember of those 166 cases recorded against Japan, quite a large number of those are from the cruise ship that is quarantined in a, a Japanese port. So they, they're not on the um, technically on the mainland of Japan, although uh, I believe Japan have taken the confirmed cases off the ship and are treating them in hospitals on the Japanese mainland. So now I want to talk about the, the death rates and the recovery rates. And I'm going to put a, a few slides on the screen and, and just talk through those. So the first one, this is the death and recovery rates for Hubei province. Now I've used the numbers of people that have either died or recovered because the, the people that are currently infected, um, at this point we don't know whether they're going to survive and make a recovery or die. So I've excluded those numbers um, from these. So these are based on either people who've died or people who've recovered. So first of all, specifically for Hubei province, which is the area where the um, virus is, is much worse than anywhere else, there are 2,639 people that have recovered and 1,068 that have died. So that's a total of 3,707. So if we do the maths on that, we can see we get a percentage of 28.8% for the death rate and a percentage of 71.2% for the recovery rate. And then moving on to the rest of China, excluding Hubei province. Now, the numbers are much, much better here. Um, we can see uh, that there's a total of 2,140 people either died or recovered. This is all the other provinces in China, excluding Hubei. And they come out at the death rate of 2.2%. 
and a recovery rate of 97.8%. And then going on to the rest of the world, which actually is very similar to the um, picture in China outside of Hubei. So again, a total number of recovered and patients that have died is 48, giving a death rate of 2.1% and a recovery rate of 97.9%. Now, um, there's obviously a big discrepancy here um, in the numbers between um, Hubei province and everywhere else. And um, like I've said in the past, I probably not 100% uh, trusting of the figures that are coming out of Hubei province. And I think that's mainly because the there is such a large amount of cases in Hubei. You know, I really think they're not being able to cope that well. And as I'll mention um, a little bit later in the video, there are quite a lot of um, healthcare workers um, that are, have been um, affected and, and actually caught the virus in Hubei province. Yesterday there was news that a number of senior members of the authorities in Hubei have been brought in for questioning and a number of them have been dismissed from their positions and Beijing have moved some sort of high ranking central government people in to, to sort of start taking control and one of those um, officials have says they're their highest priority now within Hubei province and Wuhan city especially is to give the best treatment possible to those um, people that are critically ill there. They, they believe they really need to improve the care of, of the most critically ill people there. It's also interesting that the, the statistics and percentages for the rest of the world um, tie into what we're seeing in uh, other provinces in China. And I will still stand by what I say. I do believe that um, other provinces around China are probably reporting pretty accurate numbers and as you can see from, from that the way that ties into um, other numbers in other countries around the world I, I still pretty much stand by by what I said about that okay so what's going on here in Shenzhen so people are starting to get back to work however um, there's still a lot of companies that that haven't started back I've noticed a sort of uh, off some offices are going back and obviously some factories are going back but but stuff is still pretty quiet more people are choosing to travel in their cars because it's a sort of safer environment than going on um, the metro or, or the bus obviously people are having to go on, on metros and, and buses um, an app has been rolled out I haven't used this but apparently you have to scan an app when you're getting on some kinds of transport um, and this is so that that you can be tracked uh, if you do come into or if you have found to be uh, close to or in contact with um, anybody who is then confirmed to to have contracted the virus you can be warned and that so these are kind of measures that that are being rolled out i think it's a really difficult situation at the moment here in the sense that you know china has to get back to work um, as would any other country really you can't sort of indefinitely shut down your country for for months and months but um, it's trying to balance that with with limiting the the spread of, of the virus um so sort of pr pretty much you know people are going to work and coming back they're not doing any sort of gathering pretty much there's nobody at any restaurants or any public gatherings any anything like that okay so now on to to other news first of all the um cruise ship that's quarantined in a japanese harbor there's now more than 170 confirmed cases on that ship and there's also been one Japanese healthcare worker who was assisting um, with some of those cases now also being found to have the virus. So this just shows you how easily it can pass from, from person to person. Um, I'm sort of scratching my head a little bit and I, I think that it's getting a bit ridiculous where they're keeping the rest of these sort of 3,000 people on this ship. Uh, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an expert, but personally my, my thought would be that um, the longer they keep 
um, the people on this ship, the more likelihood more people are to contract the virus. I think they really should be making plans to sort of evacuate um, these people from, from the ship. This has also had um, knock-on um, effects to another cruise ship which is in the region. Um, so far about five countries have um, refused to let that ship uh, dock. It has about um, 1,500, 2,000 people on board but authorities in a number of countries have refused to let that ship dock for fear of, of you know, having the same situation as, as Japan. Um, and it's reported that 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 ship may be now um, running out of food um, because they haven't been able to dock and, and restock food at, that, at any port. I guess it's that um, none of these countries want the responsibility of having to deal with, um, you know, a, a sort of large amount of patients who could potentially be um, infected. There's no confirmation that anybody on this second ship is infected, um, but I think it's just a, a sort of um, precautionary measure a lot of these uh, countries are taking in not letting the ship dock. Okay, so something that that is uh, quite quite sad. It's um, as a report out yesterday that in in uh, Wuhan, up to 500 medical workers have actually been um, have actually contracted the disease. Uh, been shown to have the disease. This just shows you again how how easily the the disease can spread. Um, and I think again one of the uh, things here is that um, it's just really hard to know who has the virus and who who hasn't. Um, and I think this is down to to the testing. And I think we've seen a a couple of um, cases now where people have first tested negative. Then a few days later, they've been tested again and been tested positive. And from what I understand, this is down to that the the tests are not that accurate at this point in time. They, the tests work on identifying a small strand of the DNA that's in the virus, but sometimes if the virus is not fully formed uh, in a, a patient that they're testing, this test can miss. And I think there's a there's a race on now um, to to sort of um, try and develop a, a better test that, that can be um, more positive in its results. I think there's a number of countries even sort of um, coming out, the USA have also said that there is a shortage, they, they just can't manufacture these test kits fast enough. And there is pretty much a shortage around the world of these test kits and I think this is why um, Japan are reluctant to unload all of these people off the ship onto to the Japanese mainland because I think there is a shortage of, of kits to actually test them. And also that the manpower um, and, and the logistics needed to sort of quarantine 3,000 plus people and test them all, that's a pretty big, a big task. Anyway, um, just before I go, I'll finally mention um, there are two suspected cases um, in a prison in the UK. Um, this, this sort of, uh, you know, leads to many questions to be asked because one of these prisoners um, travel from a prison in Thailand um, and obviously that, that prisoner would have been on a flight, would have come into contact with guards and uh, it also suggests that in the, the prison system um, in Thailand that, that um, virus may be spreading. It's interesting to see that Thailand have, have reported uh, very few new cases for a number of days and, and experts feel that the, the, the virus may actually be spreading in Thailand and Thailand are not picking that up. So that will be an interesting development. Um, I think there's no confirmation whether those, those two prisoners have tested positive yet, but it is a, an interesting development. Anyway, that's the end of the, the video update for today. Um, I'll as usual, if you like our video, please give us a thumbs up. If you like the channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you really want to uh, know as soon as we get a new video out there, hit those bells. Uh, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. But for now, as always, take care.